really important that coaches start <coughs> developing a seasonal plan. Uh, parents are always asking where they're headed, especially if they're starting off and they don't understand what you're trying to create on the ice. When we break things down as far as the, that nasty word of systems, which all leads back to your skills. So if you're trying to work as a coach towards a particular system, you need to get in place and develop and have the kids comfortable with skills. You know, there's not much use in having a breakout if they're not passing, not pivoting, uh, not aware of things. So we encourage coaches come August to sit down and sort of start putting together a rough seasonal plan, which is then adapted to the kids that they get. And that's the key thing. The seasonal plan is for the kids' team, the team. It's not the coach's seasonal plan. <coughs> that's a whole other monster. So every August I have an idea. Mine develops when I was coaching, which I'm back to doing this year in H3, so which is um, what, eight year olds, uh, seven year olds. So I've already started formulating what I perceive as their level, which is not going to be on. It's going to change as soon as I hit the ice with the kids and see where they're at. And now I'm going to re restructure my seasonal plan for their needs and then bring them through to where milestones that I'm trying to get to whether it be a two-week period a one-week period a month sometimes I'll run a drill knowing it's going to fail so that I can show the kids where their challenges are okay we need to work on this aspect of our skill base and that's what it all comes down to try to encourage your kids your coaches to run a skill analysis of their team early in the season they can compare it then mid-season and at the end of the season. So it is very important. So as this little slogan says, and this is very good, if you don't know where you're going, how do you know when you get there? You know? Makes sense. And I'm going to be wandering back and forth because I don't know if this thing will reach. No. There's one that I've seen before, and then a coach says, yeah, this is my seasonal plan. <laughs> yeah, that's a comment I had too. Very scattered. It's there. But how do you relay that to the players? How do you relay that, something like that, to the players, the coaches, the, uh, the parents? <laughs> well, everything's all there, but... A hornet's nest. So the benefits of a seasonal plan determines what good performance involves. And everybody, including the players, has their own concept of what a good performance is. A lot out there say it's a W. It's not a good performance unless we win. Not true. Tell that, try to impress that upon a, a seven-year-old. Okay, develops, prioritizes goals and objectives. What's the most important skills the kids need to develop presently? Where can you lead to next? takes control of the environment allowing players to work on their weaknesses I like to word, use the word challenges which is what it is I don't operate in a negative I work in a positive <coughs> creates optimum scheduling for competition you know when your tournaments are you know when your playoffs are you know when things that you you know milestones within the season what do I need to prepare the kids for for that and then a tournament can be a test of it uh, allocates appropriate time and practice for teaching and refinement of skills. Some things you're going to need more time on. Some things the kids are going to adapt to very quickly. So what you may allow for two weeks to develop a certain aspect may take a month, may take three days. Well, there goes your seasonal plan out the window. So it's, it's a growing living document that just fluctuates throughout the season, moves forward two steps, maybe backwards a step down the road. Maybe weeks, four steps. So be prepared to accommodate what the kids are up to. Uh, divide the season into manual components. Try to do it so that you have blocks as you're moving along. Okay, we've achieved this. Whether you do it offensive, defensive, whether it's certain grouping of skills. You know, the, the kids then, you can even put, produce a report card and say, hey, we've done this. You know, red stars for this, yellow stars for, okay, we need to be working on these areas. Remember, kids are very visual. They like these sort of things. Uh, ongoing evaluation process. That's an evaluation for the kids as well as for the coaches. Sometimes we get caught up in the moments. And you've 
seen some really bad things that the kids have done in a game and you immediately want to work on that. It can be very scattering for the kids. If you start jumping around, you know, I, I'm very reliant on my seasonal plant. And I have had much success with it where I don't really concern about the results, <coughs> but the results took care of themselves after Christmas. And I went through about three seasons where we went undefeated after Christmas. But we had growing pains before Christmas. You know, but the old analogy is it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So everybody was happy at the end of the season. Uh, creates consistency, involves what has to be done, ha has been done previously, incorporates experience from others. I may be going off to the rink and I see some things that are happening on the ice and go, hey, I've been struggling trying to figure out how to do that. I now want to implement that right into my plan. And I do. I'm a good coach. I beg, borrow, and steal wherever you let me. Or not. <laughs> Uh, creates effective use of resources. Visual kids again. I now am armed on the ice constantly with my iPhone. No advertising there. Uh, and I'm videotaping. And I have found that I can correct really, really, really quick by just showing the kids what they're doing and saying, this is what I want you to adjust. And they'll go out in the next couple of reps and they'll work on that because now they've visually seen what they're doing that could be done differently. And it's very powerful for these kids. I was amazed at how powerful it was. And they really, really enjoy seeing themselves. Okay. What I'm going to propose we're going to do is I'm going to hand you guys out, or you folks out, a blank sheet. And you're going to develop a seasonal plan. No pressure. And just see an experience with some coaches. How many have done a seasonal plan in here? Perfect. So uh, help out. We're just going to do a real quick one, do a couple months sort of thing. We'll do two levels. Uh, your coaching uh, environment, meaning the team, the age group, I've got two levels. So we'll do Adam and below for one sheet and Pee Wee and above for another. Uh, goals and objectives. Determine your to-do list. Necessary support. Let's do a better job using our people on the ice, especially the assistant coaches. Let's develop them into so that they're, if you're away, they can run a team. I see a lot of teams out there where, hey, they come into clinics and they go, I'm only the assistant coach. I'm only here because I have to be here. And I just say, only? I can't survive as a head coach without my assistants. How many have tried to run practice by themselves? Yeah? A little more effective with help on the ice? Always. Always. And what ends up happening is, is people on the ice feel, hey, I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to bother going on the ice. So really work at developing your assistance. Uh, we, we do have the availability to use on-ice helpers. Those are the, the people that you can use to move the cones, move the pucks. Let your coaches start learning to teach. And that's what we are, we're teachers. I don't use the word much. If anybody's been into one of my clinics, I immediately live out, you're not coaches. You're instructors of the game. And, and understand that. You know, the coaches, that's for the junior and in professional leagues. We're here to develop hockey players and grow within ourselves as coaches. Document the plan. Very important. You know, we need a practice plan. We need to have it. And, and make notes after your practice on how it went. Do the kids need certain elements within that practice? More work, less work? They got it? Uh, implement, monitor, and evaluate. Get together with your assistant coaches. Have a good feel of where the team's at in relationship to where you want to go. And I always do a, a, a detailed review at the end. So my seasonal plan ends up with lots of chicken scratch all over it at the end where I'm moving certain aspects forward, backwards, eliminating, adding, 